Hey. Oh yes, we are live at four. Uh, right. <laughs> on, on the All count right. of five and a half, we'll be live <laughs> on Google Hangouts. Yes, yes, yes. Well, uh, hi guys. This is Thunder E from Border Work, and welcome to our weekly hangout. This is a very special episode. Uh, for one main reason, because I will try and shed a tear, because this is the last episode we're going to have Mr. Andrew Cam with us. No, don't uh, leave me, Andrew. It's sadly, it, all good things must come to an end. Come back to me. Yes, yes, yeah. I, I tried, but the tears are not coming out, Andrew. I'm sorry. Yeah, I will manage. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, a Andrew. Andrew's moving on to other things, so uh, he will not be able to join us on a weekly basis. Uh, hopefully, we can have him back at some point in the future. Uh, by then, he might be, you know, a big rock star, CEO somewhere. I mean, who knows? <laughs> who, who knows? Who knows? I mean, exactly. better be if he's leaving us. He's yeah. leaving us, and he ends up like working at a Waffle House or something like that. I'm gonna be pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. But if I work at the Waffle House, I can get you free breakfast. So you know it's a perk. All right, hook up the grits, and I think we'll be all right. He's like, he's like, okay, I'll, I'll take the perk. The perk is fine. The perk is okay. <laughs> I'll always yeah. take a perk. <laughs> so yes, yes. So we have an interesting hangout. So like I said, Andrew's leaving. And again, dude, thank you very much for joining us. You know, this last couple of months, weeks. You know, your input has been dearly appreciated. Um, even though not much was from that input, but dearly appreciate it all the same. Oh, wow. Wow. He's throwing daggers on the way out. What's this in my back? I feel something going on. I mean, I mean, I mean, you wouldn't be a hangout without throwing a few knives out there, you know? <laughs> but seriously, thank you very much, man. Um, you know, uh, good luck with everything you do as you move forward. Thank you, guys. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, so this week we are doing also something different. And uh, weekly, uh, we're going to start this weekly where we're going to have a giveaway uh, for you guys so you can enter to win and win something cool. And we will have the question for the giveaway at the end of the show. And all you have to do this is very simple. Make sure you subscribe to uh, all the channels, which would be Board at Work, BW1, Some Gadget Guy. Um, on here, uh, and um, and then answer the question, and you enter to win. Now, currently the giveaway is limited to residents of the United States because you know it does cost a lot to ship internationally. But we will have some for international audiences, and we will. Oh. Did I lose him, or did he? No, I think he went out, yeah. Oh, okay, good. Okay, yeah, so it's not crazy. So uh, we'll see if we can hang out long enough for him to jump back in. But yes, uh, because uh, shipping gets expensive, we will be looking EX06 at... EX06 oh. headset. Oh, he's back, sort of. Oh. Oh, okay, oh yeah, sorry. Sorry, uh, we're, we're, having, we're having some technical difficulties here. Okay, Hangouts has been quite useless of late. kind of flaking on us lately. Come on, Google, get with it. Yes, yes. yes. You've got to pull for 60 frames per second video now, but you can't keep a Hangout going. <laughs> Let, let's let's not be too angry with them before they decide to cut us off entirely. Oh, yeah, no, that's true. Yeah, let's yeah, but <laughs> but, but uh, like that, they're Google. They can do whatever they want. <laughs> but but for the giveaway prizes, we have two prizes this week. Um, first one is the EX06 um, wireless headset. Works with a PS4, PS3, Xbox One, Xbox 360, and PC. And the next uh, prize is a Steel Series rival gaming mouse. So two people will get to win. Remember, uh, you have to subscribe to all three channels: Board at Work. Um, some gadget guy and BW1 and answer the question which we, you'll hear at the end of the show. So let's get things rolling. This week was Android week. It was mm -hmm. a big Google I.O. week with a lot of announcements, a lot of stuff going on this week and Google made um, a big splash in a sense and they announced Android L. Android L is is the latest version of Android. Um, you know They've gone away from naming it you know, uh, desserts. Now it's just L. I, I don't know why. Oh uh, no, but they're actually they're delaying giving the the dessert name. We need to work out their cross licensing yeah. deal with uh, Lemon Drops or with uh, <laughs> oh somebody like that. Okay, all right. Yeah, so. they're gonna in the fall when it releases, they're gonna say the whatever the dessert name is. But I'm hoping right it's Lion Bar. Yeah, Lion, Lion Bars yeah. would be pretty. Sweet. I've got my fingers crossed for Lemon Cake for a game. Lemon of cake. So, all right. <laughs> I was say, what else? There's licorice, lollipops, uh, lemon bars. 
Lemon meringue pie. Lemon meringue pie would be yeah. good, especially after we didn't get key lime pie. Yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah, I mean, there are a couple out there. We'll figure it out. <laughs> this is going to be excruciatingly painful <laughs> if we're on that much of a time delay. Um, already in the Q&A, we've got a, a little comment there from Lou Rod. Lou Rod, here's my little Megatron. I don't know if you can see me, but here's, uh, he's going to be joining me throughout the Hangout. I, I, I might not be doing my Frank Walker impersonation because I've got a little bit of a cough going, and whenever I do, I start hacking up bad. Ugh. That would suck. But, uh, yeah, uh, this may be one of the best Loot Crate. Because uh, uh, you can also see uh, Thunder E is sporting his Marty McPrime t-shirt from this month's Loot Crate. So uh, I, I kind of geeked out hard on that. It's uh, all Transformers stuff, which is uh, pretty near and dear to my heart. So it's good times. Yeah. Oh, cool. Lou Rod with an L name, Laffy Taffy. There you go, Laffy Taffy, because then uh, Taffy. Android would have access to all kinds of awesome jokes. You could ask Google now to tell me a joke, just like you can do with Cortana. Hmm. Yeah, but I'm afraid of all the, the bad uh, two th early 2000 Atlanta rap references that will come up when people say Laffy Taffy. That's true. That's true. Yeah, but while we're waiting for E, we should probably uh, just get into... Like the major thing in Android L, which is yet another redesign. Google has this new design language that they're calling Material, where they're basically they're staying with the, the flat UI trend, but they're making it a little the text a little going to be a little bit thinner. They're going to have an injection of more color. You know, Android mm -hmm. typically has been black and white, white and gray uh, with a little bit of uh, blue. It's been kind of uh, laid back and understated. They're putting in a little bit more color now, and you're going to see some limes in there, some sky blues, to make it a little more appealing. And this design language is actually going to go across from Android to Chrome and their web products as well. Uh, so we're going to see Google do a lot of different things in terms of design. What did you think of the change in look, Juan? I, I think it's interesting watching all of these companies sort of approach uh, design language and UI and start ending up at kind of the same place. Because this is similar to some of the things, like especially when you look at the new Android keyboard, it looks a lot like the color palette and the tone and the hue that we see out of iOS 7. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like we're all sort of funneling design into this sort of one accepted theme or one accepted vibe that'll change over time, obviously, whenever something becomes popular or a new, a new, new design element becomes more popular. But right now, we're all kind of ending up at the same place. Um, flat design kind of came in with Microsoft and Live Tiles, and then Apple sort of borrowed that for a more minimalistic look with less skeuomorphism. And now it looks like Android's taking that even just a step further, where they're trying to get away from anything that 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 looks like it had a an analog component. Like they're just getting rid yeah. of everything. And so I love like the keyboard doesn't even have keys anymore. It's just letters. You know, it's just this is the alphabet. Used. Exactly. And so yeah, that, that I think is is kind of cool. Yeah, that was one of the things that Apple was trying to get away from because their whole design was digitizing real-world references like you'd see, mm -hmm. like in the stitching. Note app, you'd see the stitching, you'd see, mm -hmm. look like a memo pad, and then they switched to like this the straight white page, type in what you need to do. And that's kind of what Android is doing. Uh, the only areas where I see them kind of uh, mixing in a little bit is with the way that the new multitasking screen works is you kind of have like this vertical Rolodex looking thing mm -hmm. where you have cards open and then you swipe to dismiss and all that instead of just the flat screen of all the opening icons you have. But the interesting, interesting. thing about this is that they're actually making it instances of apps. So if you have a document open in Google Docs and then you have another document open, you can actually switch between the two of them rather than yeah. just switching to Google Docs. But I, but I think that's interesting in that the, the one carryover from this idea of skeuomorphism is Google is sticking with the idea of cards, as if everything exists on its own little card stock, and that's how you interact with it. You just shuffle them around. So that, that I, I think, is, is kind of an interesting statement to make from a design and aesthetic standpoint. Um, uh, but I'm... Oh, hey, welcome back! Thunder yeah. you, everybody! I, I have no Thank idea... You. Uh, this this my portion of the hangout is now brought to you by Verizon, because oh, for no. some reason uh, Google says my connection is bad, but I'm still getting 100 megabits per second. So I have no idea whatsoever what's going on. 
But um, what did I miss? Sorry, I apologize for oh, just we, disappearing. We just like we're going over the new design language in Android L, the new color palettes, the minimalistic design. We were talking about the cards. What what was your reaction to seeing Android L in action? Uh, at first, very meh. Um, coming to use it now on my Nexus Five, it's a little bit higher than meh. But um, the reason why is because the card UI, we've already seen it with YouTube and some of the other apps that have been updated. Right. Um, what I did like from them was the fact that, you know, they addressed some of the topics we talked about. What will Google do when Microsoft is doing unification and, and Apple is doing this uh, connectivity type thing with their OSs and Google now says Android L will now flesh out everything for a design platform from, you know, your uh, cell phones to tablet, and most likely eventually Chrome at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. Chrome OS <laughs> is going to disappear because now that you can now use applications there, you've got that connectivity between that two. So at least I think I like that clear approach from them. In terms of um, L, I hate that luxury notification crap. It is stupid. Really? You it don't is, like it? I, I mean, um, t yeah, seriously, because it's one of those things that it just jumps in and um, on your phone, everyone can see unless you turn it off, you know. Um, but yeah, that's, fair. That, that's pretty much it. Like everyone can see whatever, you, what, whatever you're doing on your device. And um, if there's no way to actually, uh, right now, there's no way to just, you know, clear everything all at once, you know, by hitting like an X button to just wipe everything away. So it's one of those things where it's a nice feature, but um, I don't think Android users necessarily wanted it. So to me, it's just kind of a little surprising. I'm not exactly sure if there was a, a big outcry for something like that from Android. Yeah, I think that was a sign of uh, Matias Duarte, the head of Android's design team. He wanted to do something different. You know, he's yeah. he's very... Uh, he, he's got a background from Helio, from WebOS, and he when he got to Android, it was admittedly very ugly, and he's trying to find ways to make it pretty and more useful. And I think this was one of the ways that they probably came up with something that they, they thought would connect with people. Whether or not that's going to be the case is going to be determined. I, I have to have a feeling that there's going to be an option to disable that because I can tell a lot of people weren't pleased with the way that operated. Oh, no, no, there's an option to disable it. But but even while you're using it, there's no option to just, like, you know, wipe everything. Like, you see all the notifications, like, okay, I don't care about this on the lock screen. Yes, you can unlock it, you know, by swiping up, but... You might also, I mean, I, I don't know. It's just one of those things that I was like, hmm, not exactly sure. But, but I mean, I, I think it's a fair, I think it's a fair statement to say that that's one of those changes that was sort of a change for change's sake. You yeah. Know what I mean, yeah. Right, right. Like, and and, and kind of what I was saying at the very beginning is, as we're sort of seeing all of these companies approach design and end up in very similar places, I think we're going to be seeing a lot of this, like, well, we're just going to change up this part of the UI because we need to stand out. And it's not yeah. really going to be kind of like some, it's how I feel about some of the changes to the new Google Plus app. You know, like a lot of those changes look kind of cool, but it didn't really make the app better or even easier to use. And in fact, now I find I'm having to look for things more than I used to when I just had a standard slide drawer that would pop out and give me all my options there. So okay. that's, I think, kind of the unfortunate byproduct of people needing new, like we need new, it needs to be new, it needs to feel new, I want to see something new, but it's not really going to be better, it's just going to be different. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, I mean that's cool, I mean, um, uh, Andrew, did you get a chance to load uh, Android L on the Nexus 5? No, I was going to put it on last night and then I forgot that my Nexus 5 isn't unlocked yet, mm. so i got to do that first, and then I'm going to try to load it up today. Okay, all right. Yeah, I mean, it works pretty well um, just off the get-go um, in terms of just, like, it crashing or anything like that. The only thing, only problem I had was Twitter just doesn't load. Yeah, because the developer previews typically ha happens with that. A lot of the apps from major companies especially, they're not going to work on there. Yeah, no, I, I, I know, but surprisingly, that's the only one I've experienced. Oh, Everything okay. else. Yeah, yeah. Facebook, fine. Instagram's fine. My banking apps are fine. Just Twitter. For some reason. Hmm. Don't don't know exactly well, why. And, and I was catching some of, some of my, like, my Android Google Plus feed uh, last night, watching everybody post screenshots of people giving one-star reviews to apps that weren't compatible with... <laughs> <laughs> That's so wrong. 
I mean, it was basically it was basically like a whole stream of how to be a dick on the internet. I mean, it, it was ridiculous. Why don't you work with this thing that doesn't officially exist yet? Arg. I'm gonna start posting like one star reviews for apps that don't work whenever I brick my phone. Oh, my phone's totally dead, and this app doesn't work at all. <laughs> so, what what features of Android L were you at least excited or uh, or disappointed with once when when you hit the announcements? Oh, we have Warren jumping in. We have Warren jumping in. Yeah, this it's funny that Warren's coming in because the thing that excites me most is the thing I think he's going to dismiss, which is Samsung right, Knox. Up, let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Warren's probably not going to care about this, but uh, Samsung is basically giving Google uh, a big portion of its Knox security system that's going to mm-hmm. split... Uh, everything in the containers. So basically, it sandboxes your personal information from your work information. And I know Warren's an IT pro, so I've heard from other IT pros that they don't think Knox goes as far as enough in security. There's so, no such thing as anything in IT going as far as enough in security. <laughs> Literally, you will always hear that. You're like, it's just not enough. I mean, truthfully, it's kind of a too late thing because it's a good feature to have. Honestly, it is. And um, I remember, I think, I remember when me and you were at CES maybe a couple of years ago, they were talking about Knox and their uh, BYOD management software. Yeah. Yeah, I remember mm-hmm. we were in that talk about that. And, um, and they, they were very doing similar things with this, but it was within, like, Samsung's specific program, and it could do it with Android and multiple Android devices. But um, it's kind of it's one of those things where it's kind of a little too late because it, it's not that the security feature or the, the belief of splitting things is, is, is not something that's nice. It's the fact that you have to train users on how to use it. And that is going to be the wall. It's just very similar to like how BlackBerry had this, you know, one on the enterprise level, and they put it in actually in BlackBerry 10 that they had this same exact feature where there was a personal and a work where they could split the two, and there was one menu for work, one menu for personal, and even... Yeah. OEMs has tried to do this within their operating system, within their skins. They tried to do this with uh, HTC Sense had like a work sense, and then mm-hmm. they had like a, everyone, you know, all different sections. And I think Samsung even did this at one point too. It's it's never the it's never the security reason because there's never there's no such thing as enough security in IT. It just not there just isn't. And it it, it goes along the lines of usability, teaching users how to use it. And if they're going to use it, period, they, they're already used to one model being having their phone, and any any apps that we need to manage or push are pushed through usually a specific app program that manages our data within that ecosystem. And if we need to pull something out, or we need to get something, or we need to secure something, we can just worry about doing it through that app, than having to worry about an infrastructure of, of relying on Google's security. And such, or the built-in security. It's it's like it's. A, I'm going around about way of saying it's kind of t- too little, too late for them to start doing this when we've all kind of come up. Every every company's come up with their own idea of getting around doing this already. You came in at the perfect time, Warren. <laughs> uh, I'm good. Okay, so so that 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 was something you like. What about a disappointment with Android L? What what disappointed you in some of the announcements? Uh, for me. Oh no, that was um, that was Andrew because uh, yeah, it was yeah. Andrew. disappointment. I haven't really seen anything like most of it. I kind of expected because you know they want to show the type of stuff that you're going to be able to take advantage of. Uh, so I didn't really expect too much from them yet. When it when it's actually out and you find the little things, you, you see that okay, this doesn't operate sensibly. I can't get to my contacts pro- properly. Those type of things are going to upset me, but I doubt. I didn't see anything right now that I can definitely say I'm disappointed in the way they did it. Okay. Um, how about you, Juan? I uh, so <clears throat> sorry. I've got a sore throat and I'm a little phlegmy, and that almost got really gross on camera. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> sorry. Um. So <laughs> almost three years ago, uh, when we were talking about ice cream sandwich. There were little hints that Google might start looking at improving uh, USB audio. And again, we saw it again in the list of updates, you know, that big L-shaped text wall 
um, yeah. during during the keynote, where again they put in a patch for low latency recording and uh, USB audio, and I think it's long overdue Google addressing this feature because it's basically going to be the backbone of every single major audio service. Uh, it, it'll have to be in there, I think, for Google Auto. I mean, Android Auto. So that as you plug your phone into your car, it's got a high quality input output so you can quickly get audio information from the phone as the brain through the speakers of your car. And then you can quickly dictate um, voice commands back mm -hmm. into the device. So, but this is also open up all kinds of doors for things like <clears throat> being able to plug a USB microphone or a USB interface into your Android phone or tablet. It'll open up a whole new range of professional uh, usage scenarios that have, for this entire time, basically been seeded to iOS. So, like, there were times where there were companies like Mackie was making mixing consoles that you could plug the iPad into, and the iPad would act as the brain of this mixing console. And now we'll finally have the opportunity to start playing with some of that um, capability in Android land. I'm stupid stoked for that. USB okay. headphones. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, and that's the other thing, too, is there are all those rumors that the lightning connector might take over as the headphone jack on iOS devices, and you could do the same thing. Instead of trying to build a high-quality digital to analog converter into a phone. Like, I'm sure HTC spends a lot of money on R&D to build in a high quality headphone jack. But now you could just have a direct digital source and just have it plug in over micro USB and I think that would be hot. Good quality too. Yeah, only because it would be pure. There would be no conversion. It would yeah. until it hits your ears and when it's actually translated into acoustic pressure. Cool, any uh, disappointments? I'm kind of in the same boat with, with Andrew. I mean, I, I kind of feel like that that we, we've we seen uh, since, like, uh, I don't know, since 4.2, we've seen a number of really cool updates, and there have been some big changes to Android. This, to me, felt more like a little iteration bump, and, I, I, I mean, like, there are always going to be features that I want to see in any operating system, but... Android has a pretty good lead on a lot of the stuff that I use, so until I get it in my hands and I start playing with it for reals, I, I don't see anything that's particularly troubling. Okay. All right, so how about you, Warren? What are your what are the things you liked and what are the things you didn't like about the Android L announcements? Android L, huh? Oh. I don't know. It's like when I talked on the uh, we talked earlier. I give this play, give this whole thing a grade of incomplete because it's a developer preview. There's like nothing, nothing for me to really get unexcited or excited about. I think maybe the coolest thing is the whole idea of the material design. Them finally giving a, a sort of a, a a name to their what they want everything to be designed around within Android and within outside of Android. This one ubiquitous look across uh, on multiple devices. I guess that was pretty cool. Um, the battery historian thing was pretty nice to hear about. Um, outside of that, it's just like I'm like so indifferent about the announcement because it didn't. There's nothing until I see it in in action, see it in its final stages. It's just kind of like, okay, you could have just given me release notes. <laughs> Read okay. release notes on a, on a, on a previous. Like you didn't show me anything. You just said it can kind of do this. I mean, the most they showed. I think in that presentation was the was the the new look of the UI that they're that they're going about doing, and um, the other thing they showed was the annoying lock screen thing, the mm -hmm. the lock screen notifications, which by far annoying is all heck. But um, besides that, they really didn't show anything other than just tell you what these things can do and. And tell you, you know, that we're we're dropping, you know, we're we're, we're building an operating system that's going to be able to work on multitude of devices and and such. It, it was a lot of developer talk, but not a lot of things for us press, us consumers that want to get that are really there to get excited about. Okay. Well, uh, for me, uh, the exciting thing it was not from the announcement, but actually the fact that after learning of my Nexus Five, for a Develop preview beta. This thing is very stable. It is. Um, it, it, I mean, it works almost like a final, final edition. So I was actually impressed with that. Um, it, you know, in terms of of disappointments, mine is basically that lock screen notification. It is stupid. 
<laughs> I'm just going to put it out there. It is very, very foolish. I don't know why they had to copy Apple on that kind of stuff. To me, not needed at all. Um, but at least you can take it off. So that's a good thing there. It won't be used. It, it will yeah. not be used outside of. It won't be used outside of uh, manufacturers probably ask for that for their specific applications that use a lock screen in some ways for certain notifications. So. Yeah. I, I imagine that they'll use those things because Samsung uses that for if you use their built-in text messaging app and, and you know we have missed calls and such they use the the lock screen within there for their own specific applications but as far as people using it probably not that's probably the dumbest thing out of anything out of Android L that came <laughs> out like everything else I get this giant sort of interesting and incomplete kind of feel to it because it's not really done yet but that's just stupid <laughs> and everybody knows it's stupid and they just came out with it anyways. It's like, and I'm not surprised it's stable because I, I can't imagine that the code is that much different. When they started to make Android 4.0, the whole idea of this was to stay on a code that was very scalable. It was going to be and continue to be stable kind of through and throughout its uh, lifespan. Right, so yeah. I'm not surprised. Like it, it, this can't be. They, you notice they didn't give it a number. They just called it Android L. So yeah. 4.0, 5.0. They might even get away from the numbers. You know, they might just start calling it, you know, you have lemon, you have this, you have that, whatever the case may be, and then just put the code numbers back in the behind it, like developers, similar to what Windows does with uh, with their with their operating system. Because, don't be, you know, if you're running Windows 8, it's not really the eighth version of Windows. It's like no. Windows NT 6.3 or something like that now. Yeah, yeah. it's still in 6, actually. Yeah. yeah, it's still in 6. You know, each iteration is actually a point upgrade, <laughs> which is kind of funny. But, um... You know, that's I guess that's my little rant about the uh, Android L's like Yeah, the only thing that's major the, the only thing that they change that's gonna be major is the the switch to the Android runtime. So they're getting yeah. away from Davic the way that the apps like load things. So you might see a bump in performance. Uh, otherwise, like for right now, it's just mainly adding new features. And it's well, that, that, that goes to uh, a comment here from Truce, Truce to God says, "Is Android L going to be 64-bit? Bit? That's what I heard. It's there. It's in the pipeline. There, it's they're it's not a it. yeah. It's not a priority right bit. now because yeah. it's not really something that they yeah. need at the moment. But it's gonna be it's, it's gonna be something that's gonna be there because Intel really wants 64-bit uh, for their chipsets. Qualcomm has already said they're gonna build a 64-bit chipset. Qualcomm, yeah." It's already Qualcomm is practically in every Android device that you buy in the in the West uh, Hemisphere, so I'm pretty think, sure that it's gonna come, it's gonna happen. I think the 805 is the 64-bit one too, mm-hmm. I believe. But and most likely they'll approach that the same way Microsoft did, where they wait they waited for all the 64-bit processes to get out there, then really and just flip the switch. Then flip the switch and they start pushing the 64-bit operating system out there. So you probably get a lot of devices with 32-bit on, and then by the time 64-bit is ready, it's just a download and an update. And it might take a little longer to update it, but it'll bring it around and probably bring it up to code at that point. Right, okay. uh, but it's 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 like it's nice that 64-bit, but the whole reality is 64-bit is to address more memory, and it's like these, these things don't have over three gigs of RAM yet. We're not talking, you know, four gig, eight gig RAM, you know, specifications yet. And when we start <laughs> looking at that to address that to have, and there's other things that 64-bit benefit from, but the reality is is that. This is made. The, the reason they're doing that isn't for the average consumer. That is going to be f- be for the uh, complex um, game that a developer wants to make. That wants to really make something very powerful and have the memory and everything to address it and really use it well. You're not going to see developers like Candy Crush using that. There's going to be something like. EA, Activision, that really want to, or, or ind- independent developers that really want to make a very vibrant game out of it. And then it's also for, you know, specific applications such as AutoCAD that needs a lot of that power to be able to run on a tablet, to be able to run those graphics, to be able to run those specific uh, CAD drawings, uh, and and also Photoshop and other applications like, I am I thinking, in a medical field, I can't remember the name of the app that they use, but the, um, that's another thing that they'll want, that, that, that has some pretty powerful, like, so sort of x-rays and scans that show great detail. That's what 64 bits gonna allow uh, to happen on on mobile devices. For right now, for the average consumer, you're not gonna notice a thing. Well, and I also think it's it's from the from the uh, 
from the major companies like Apple and Google and Microsoft. I think it's more just a play for unification. Mm -hmm. We know Apple's building towards some kind of response to Windows 8. We don't know what that's going to look like, but OS X is going to run 64-bit on everything. Mm -hmm. uh, we know Microsoft is probably going to be pulling the same thing next year with Threshold. And so I think Google will probably be the last in line. Because you, what you were saying, Warren, it's like it, they don't really need to on mobile devices, and not until yeah. we have these types of uh, usage scenarios handed to us. But I, I would see where in the next year or two it'll kind of become mandatory for them yeah. to just make the switch, regardless of whether or not these devices are actually using all of that power. I definitely agree with you with uh, what you were saying, um, that it's, it, it's really the response of Microsoft, because to, to go to the 64-bit for this unification thing to allow developers to develop one in one location for many different places, but the approaches are very different, because one is, you know, approaching it from, from writing in it for an ARM platform right. that, that has still a certain level of limitation to it versus Microsoft is just truthfully trying to take what runs on your laptop and make it run everywhere possible in the yeah. same way that it could run without yeah. the need of anything being truthfully different. You really just have Windows and it's just Windows. It's all that yeah. it is. You know, it's x86 or x64, whatever it is, it just runs Windows. If you want to install it, XE you could, XE could technically run on your phone. You know what I'm saying? Like just the, the, the idea that it's just full-blown computing no matter where you go. And that's that's kind of what other two are trying to get to. Yeah, yeah, no, that's definitely true. Uh, moving on to the other Android announcements, uh, we saw Android Wear in full force. Uh, basically, um, Google showed off the LG G Watch as well as the Galaxy. No, no, sorry, I keep calling Galaxy. The Gear Live. <laughs> I, I do know. that too. Yeah. The, <laughs> The Gear Live, we uh, we did see some hands-on, of course, of the Moto 360. Um, but um, you know, what do you guys think about the announcement? Especially the fact that all those watches only last for a day, 36 hours is what. That's claimed. that's my big problem. I, I wrote an editorial on this. Is like with this type of new push into wearable technology, it's all about compromises. And so Samsung with the Gear, the Gear 2, the Gear Neo. They made a compromise for the usability factor. So, like, your, your screen is off almost all the time. My gear is actually over there. Um, your screen's off almost all the time, and you have to, like, flick it or hit a button, and then it turns on. But the more you use that screen, the faster your battery runs down. But if you use it the way they say you should use it with screen off most of the time, you can get two to three days worth of battery life. Yeah. I'm really digging the fact that Google is dictating an always-on screen, but that means... Your, your battery is just dying if you're using a traditional screen dis uh, display technology like LCD yeah, or AMOLED. Yeah, but, it's yeah. just sucking down juice that whole time. And so that's why I kind of think, like, you know, I I'm surprised that companies haven't been reaching out to, like, Qualcomm or looking at variations on maybe, like, a color e-paper display or something like that to, uh, to keep uh, run uh, battery uh, in check for always-on screen scenarios. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I was kind of in the same boat. I was more disappointed in what wasn't announced with the Motorola 360 because when they said uh, Android Wear is going to be available later today, I reached in for my wallet to already to, to make my purchase and it goes, Moto 360, later this summer. And I had to reach back down and put my wallet away. Nah. Just, <laughs> after, after, after it took it forever for it to show up online. The other yeah. Time. And I was like, I, I, the gear live interests me a little more than the G-Watch. I just don't like the G-Watch because it's so typical smartwatch. It's just a rectangle with a huge bezel, and you can do a lot of cool stuff with it. But I just don't like the look. The 360 is what appeals to me because of the aesthetics. The Gear Live, I could make a compromise with because it kind of looks a little bit nicer. But at the same time, I was disappointed that the Motorola wasn't available, and we didn't really see hands-on. We saw a canned demos of it because it was basically playing a video. So it made me think, if they're not even willing to show it at this point, how what is it going on with the 360 that it's so far away? Um, I, no, the, uh, the only person who had a demo was uh, MKBHD. Um, he actually got some hands-on time with the Was watch. it a working demo? Because I saw yeah. a lot of hands-on videos where it's a product manager that's basically just tapping on the screen and it, you can tell that it's a pre-rendered video. Um, no, no, I think I think all the three, I think all of them ended up getting something or another, some type of time. Um, yeah. All the major publications ended up getting some time with the Moto 360, 360 on a, yeah. a more of a hands-on private level. I think those were done probably either before the announcements or okay. at, at some point or another. Point, so yeah. those those did show up. 
I, 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 th I think what it is is that there's, there's some software elements for that that are not it's not fully ready. So they wanted to control, you know, how it's going to be used. And you know, with the bigger publications and with you know people like that, you can always say, hey, look, please do this, do this, do this, because this is not ready, you know, type of thing yet. So, so I'm thinking that's that is the case there with it altogether. But, um, you know, I agree with you too. Yeah, the fact that that wasn't announced is kind of a bummer. I am. I also like the Gear Live just because it's cheaper. That yeah. that three hundred dollar price range for the LG G Watch is like okay for another square box. You're charging three hundred bucks. Well, but the battery um, is no, thirty percent uh, larger on the LG, and it's still thirty six hours. I'll be right back. I'm gonna need some yeah. rant juice. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to refuel. Yeah. It, it's still it's still thirty six hours, and you know you're you're still doing that. So to me, it's one of those things where. You know, it just makes no sense at yeah. all, you know. And um, it was a little bit disappointing because I went, we gave Samsung a lot of flack on the first gear, and that had longer battery life. Well, but it's because of this compromise. It's, it's do you compromise the usage of the device for stuff like the runtime of the device? And I'm really torn because I've been spoiled by watches like the Martian, the Pebble, and the Qualcomm Talk. And those each legitimately will run four to six days, depending on how much I'm using them and, yeah. and how I'm how I use my my phone with them. And so the gear was kind of a step backwards, and way more features, way more stuff. Samsung loves piling everything in the kitchen sink into all of their gadgets, yeah. but um, that meant costing me a day or two of battery life. Now we're taking an even bigger step back to get the same always on screen functionality of the Pebble and the Talk. I'm down to a day, which I know under heavy use scenarios is going to be <laughs> twelve dead hours by dinner. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, we know that's what it's going to be. So yeah. we got to get away from using traditional screen technology, and also I don't want that overlap. I don't want my phone and my watch to have the same strengths and weaknesses. Yeah, my what, phone is... doesn't look good in direct sunlight. I want a watch that looks awesome in direct sunlight to counterbalance how I use my phone. I want I want see, those two to work in tandem, not have the same weaknesses. See, see, my problem with it is uh, why have always on? To me, to me, it makes no sense because if you're pushing Google Now notifications, right? It's whatever you're pushing is should be the limitation, and you can should set it. So I don't want it to come on every single time or be always on. Because in my case, my Google now is literally um, walk up, you know, and, and a few sport things here and there. And then whenever I'm traveling somewhere, except the creepy fashion that now Google tells me about stuff in my calendar when I'm not in that state to go there. And it would take me how many right. miles. But, but, I mean, it no. should be always on. But I just want the basics of, like, being able to look at the time. It's a watch. Yeah, exactly. You know, like, so it's, as I've been wearing the Qualcomm Talk, that's the biggie. It's like I can always look down at my wrist and see... What's the main screen that I keep it on? I see the the date, the time, the weather, and the temperature. And that's like every single time I look down at my wrist, I don't have to move my wrist around. I don't have to push a button. I can always reference that. I can always see that that information. That requires the screen to be what? on. Yeah, but yeah, no, no, but, but why don't you make it like, um, you know how Nokia has that, what's that screen they use on the Nokia phones? Glass. Wait, it, yeah, the lens, yeah, where, where your time and stuff is always there, but that thing oh, but is still low power. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think that would be better, but then you would still run into the same issue of that screen is not very viewable in direct sunlight. I mean, true. It's still better than, actually, it's still viewable, more viewable than an, most than an off screen. Than an off-screen. You're right yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, think, I think that's the thing that, you know, they need to make some compromises there. But um, how about you, Warren, now that you've got rat juice and all fueled up? I got a drink out of my uh, Donald Duck glass here. <laughs> <sighs> Smartwatches. Uh, it's just why. I don't understand it. I don't get it. Why do you want something that your phone already does? Are you that lazy? You Seriously, it's, it's 2014. A, a watch these days is just a fashion accessory. It's a piece of jewelry. The last useful time I ever used a watch was back in grade school and as a calculator watched the Cheetah Math class. Why, what else would I use a watch for beyond that right now these days other than to put it on with a nice suit, to have it as a talk piece when you're out in dinner or something beyond that. But, you know, I, I don't need a giant notification screen on my wrist. I don't get why we need it there. But, you know, you know, Beyond that, they're all too expensive as it is anyways. I think $199 is too much for these things. These should be $99 products. 
they should be a lot cheaper because all they really do is bring your notifications to here, bring what Google now already says to here, you know, so you don't have to pull out your phone. About the only only people I think that would ever be useful for is women that keep phones in their purses. And that is about it. So you don't have to take it out of their purse. They can just kind of look at look on look on their wrist. Might be a little nicer for them, but the watch is also giant, so it's going to cover half their wrist. But um, if that's if the the the, the that's if the the watch itself lasts longer than you know six hours out of the day with the battery life these things are rated at. So I think for my my take is I'm just kind of like, man, I don't care about smartwatches. It just doesn't you know, it just doesn't interest me just because it's like it's doing the same thing your phones are already doing. You know, it's 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 it's. it's I, I'm trying to find a compelling reason to jump in and go, yay, smartwatches. There's nothing. Like I've always said, he does it teleport you to command center? Can you can you talk on it? Anything like that? No. You know, there's none of that there. You know, can I shoot something out? Laser beams and, and can you shoot something out? Yeah, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Can I pull some Dick Tracy or something like that? I mean, this is one of the cool all this smartwatch stuff has actually honestly led to me companies sending me stuff like this that I'm gonna be reviewing soon, like some unique looking watches like this. From Kisai that kind of has like different faces and different designs. These are pretty cool things. They're not smart watches, but at least it's a different way. They got some funky ways to spend the time, and it makes it a cool, like, nice thing, you know, to 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 talk about. And it's a decent looking watch. It's made some pretty good quality. I'd rather have this than any of those other smart watches out there. Seriously, it's just it, I I don't get it. I, I, I Android where I like, but I'd rather see that be used in something far more plausible, like like. Similar with the, how maybe make the gear fit actually a lot better, making you know you know, you maybe fits into headphones or you know uh, some other type of like fitness or wearable or you know health and fitness where it can track data or it can give you a different perspective. It can do a lot of different things within there. They're all attacking the same thing. Let's attack a square little tri- square box on your wrist, and we'll let it tell you a third of the information that the same notification tells you in your phone, but you're too first world lazy to pull out your phone because it's stuck within your skinny jeans somewhere. So, <laughs> Hey, man, it's not easy getting your phone out of skinny jeans. It's a lot of work. Yeah, it's, it's a bit tight, man. It's a bit Especially tight. when you're not skinny. So. Right. Especially yeah, if, if you are a grown ass man, you should not be wearing any skinny jeans. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. All right. So moving. You know, let, let's answer some of the the questions here in the uh, in the Q and A. Few questions here. Um, so. Uh, Truce the God says, how often should Google keep creating a new Android OS? I just recently got an OTA for KitKat on my Note 3 for <coughs> Verizon. Getting hard to keep track of <laughs> on Android. <laughs> so yeah. do, you think, do you think they should keep you know, uh, updating as, as fast as they do or pace it out a little bit because it doesn't reach out to all the devices you know, at the same time? Well, and I it's tricky with Google and with Android because a lot of the stuff that we would normally get in these major updates we're getting more regularly now because of Google Play services. So I kind of feel like they could go back to one year major, major updates, but we're constantly getting fed, you know, keyboard update, the talk to speech engine is a separate app, the Google Play services is a separate app, every little piece of it is a separate app that's getting updated on its own in the background, you don't even notice it anymore. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of hard to, I mean, I think This is what's funny is I think as we go through more of these, like the L update, the M update, the N update, those updates are going to become less and less meaningful. I think they're going to become less and less uh, big deals because the core uh, bug fix patch and services uh, updating schedule is on each individual app's uh, schedule, not one major yearly schedule. Yeah, it's going to be an annual update schedule because if you look at KitKat, the, the highlight, the marquee feature of their was performance increases. There wasn't anything really in there uh, other than the full screen mode, which you are already getting in no. uh, other smartphones. There wasn't anything in there that you, you say, oh my god, I can't believe I haven't gotten Kit yet, KitKat yet, unless you were just saying that because you wanted KitKat because you saw everyone else had it. And uh, Sundar Prachai made a good point. He said that 93% of current Android devices are up to date with Play Services. And mm-hmm. it's like Juan said, all of those things that we used to get, like when Android 2.0 came out, we had the maps in there, 
and you had App 2.0 to get Maps. Well, now Maps is a standalone app in Google Play, and every time they update Maps, everyone gets it if you've got Android 2.3 or later. So mm-hmm. at the moment, we're all essentially on the same version of Android from a Google services perspective. Right. The only yeah. thing that we're missing yeah. is the performance bumps. Which they seem to be handling every so often. And, and now those are even getting to be pretty soon marginal performance bumps that we're not going to notice, but of maybe a few people here and there, especially now that they're really aiming at making uh, lower-end devices you know, work very well with Android. Yeah. Um, another question is from uh, Gamers Gone Crazy or Three. Along with this, uh, with design, there are a lot of super nice themes. What do you think about using themes over the original company's design? Yes. <laughs> I don't know what. The, I don't know what. The, I don't know what the question was. No, it's like, do you want to use themes instead of the visual version of TouchWiz? Not like yes. the underlying stuff. Just. Like the the UI skin layer, yeah, yeah, mm. and I mean, like I tinker a little, and I end up sort of always going back to Nova Launcher just because I'm familiar with it. But I mean, I think that's one of those personal. I think that's a personal choice. Questions. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. a personal preference. They yeah, he was, but that's why he was asking, "What do you think? It's your personal, you know, what's your personal choice?" I try and keep it as simple as possible because I don't know what phone I'm going to be on any given day. Yeah, so I'm not exactly the best person to ask. That. I, I, I simply just end up sticking to whatever the oh, manufacturer one zero. is. 1-0. Sorry. I, end, I, I, end up just, I eventually end up always sticking to whatever the manufacturer sort of laid out already for it with very little, you know, that's loud, with very little, um, with very little, like, Changes or anything like that to it for me. Okay. All right. So um, before we move to Android TV, because that's going to be rant filled, um, what do you guys think about Google making the announcement of Android One, the One program, which basically is aimed to tackle that low end? So uh, I have price just range. a short little mini rant. Can we stop calling things One? Can can we stop doing that? Can we stop uh, having the HTC One, maybe having dinner with the One Plus One? Uh, playing some <laughs> Xbox One and then introducing themselves to some Android ones. Stop! Stop! Stop naming things the number O N E. Just quit it. I mean, that's a good point. There's so many other things to call devices out there. Why? Why do we keep coming back to this one number? And also, will we ever call something Android two? Will we ever? Especially see... since there is a B W one. <laughs> There's I mean, a lot why? of copyright infringement. That's these OG days. right there, man. Why would you even try and get in that? That was the first one. So, <laughs> so that's that. Aside from that, you know, I'm always going to be super excited about any initiative that starts hitting developing markets. Uh, I'm. I, I think this is going to be the hottest sector of growth. I think this is going to be where the next big boom happens for connected devices and connected services. So I'm always happy to see a company tackle it. I think Microsoft started off the discussion, Motorola continued it, and now uh, Google is properly looking to get into that arena because that's where the, the, the premier smartphone market is mature. There's not going to be as much explosive growth as what we've seen over the last couple of years. And for these companies that really want to make a big splash and get people on board their various ecosystems, it's going to come from entry-level devices which are not painful to use. True. Uh, any thoughts, Andrew? No, I'm just going to say that uh, when Juan was talking about connected homes, there's going to be a home uh, product called One Home or something like that. And I was going to say, uh, you can make a note of that and save it in your, <laughs> save it in your One Drive because you're going to revisit yep. this one day. And it connects with uh, more than one home, two homes. <laughs> you that see, no, but, but you, know, you know, for me, when you had using the number one, it has to make sense. One Drive, I actually like that name. Well, it makes sense for them. Oh yeah, yeah it makes, makes sense for that. Yeah. But when They're you just the have only one, yeah, when when you have one everywhere, like the HTC One, where you know you're gonna have a sequel to it, makes no sense. Right. Things like that. Yeah. So I know I definitely agree, but it's it's nice to see that Google is finally trying to tackle that low end market because, like you said, one, it's it's the market where the most amount of money would be made. That's the market that will push cell phones past the. What one billion mark or whatever they mark is is now at least to reach the other six billion people on the planet. So um, that's somewhere that they need to they need to definitely tackle and, and handle pretty well overall. So uh, let's move on to our Rantville. It's what I call Rantville. Android TV. 
psh, I'm gonna turn away right now. <laughs> I'm just gonna look at the screen of the game because ah, this it frustrates me so much. I hate Google for doing this. They keep returning to the same scene of the crime and committing the same crime without investigating what Where's went my, wrong. Where's my red card? Why? <laughs> Why? Why? Damn it! We need a just red card. Out. And it, it it occurred to me that. Like I said this on Twitter, like Chromecast was pretty much just a backdoor into justifying interest for people to make Chromecast apps. Because really they took all of the features in Chromecast and inserted it into Android TV. So now they don't have to convince the they basically trick developers because now they don't have to convince them to say, Oh, you need to support Android TV with your apps because people are gonna buy it. No one's gonna buy Android TV. No. But they will buy a Chromecast because it's so cheap. The barrier to entry is practically nothing. So you you got thirty five dollars, you can connect your phone to your TV. You have all these new services. With Android TV, you don't really get that. Well, you do get it with Chromecast, but you have no other compelling reason to spend the amount of money that it's going to take for you to have Android TV. Yeah, it's pretty UI, but it's worthless. I know who wants these Android TVs. These people in these World Cup that keep on going. Uh, <laughs> I just had to put that in there. I just saw it. <laughs> but then also, uh, aren't, aren't, isn't one of the things Google that was so nice going about... themselves with this, this Google TV nonsense? Yeah. So well, is, isn't one. isn't one of the things that was so nice about the Chromecast was that it wasn't another UI? Like that's yeah. what I loved about the Chromecast is like mm -hmm. I just used my phone and my phone just made my TV do things. It wasn't like I had to switch over to a different interface to no, scan no. through things that I might want to do. I, I already have I, my phone or my tablet. I can already just do it from there. I, I agree, but it, it's really funny to do that because on Android L here, you can cast your screen, which means undoubtedly you can also cast whatever applications over to your, right. your smart TV. And we talked about this when we, we had to hang out there in the, uh, when they made the announcement. Myself, Warren, and Alex was basically... Android TV needs to be an app on your phone. You know, just that that whole area where all your things come together. And if you want to make a higher level Chromecast that plays video games, make that. You know, make that Chromecast too that people can now have as a dedicated game box, blah blah blah, all that kind of stuff. You know, you want you want to get into that space, but you don't want to move away from what Chromecast does itself. It's simple. It's easy. Um, people can easily buy it, and the whole idea of Android TV and what was the most um, telling thing about this is that I, we were talking about it is that they mentioned all these partners. They, they forgot to mention the three most important one: Samsung, LG, Vizio. Those yeah. guys are gonna give a shit about it. LG definitely doesn't give a shit about it because no. LG spent the most amount of money investing in Google TV, and they lost out big. Yeah, they lost no, out uh, big. Logitech spent more and they lost more. Oh, oh yeah. LG, LG, uh, LG, uh, well, no, 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 no. no, 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 no. Nobody topped Sony though. Nobody topped Sony in that one. Sony, Sony made a damn TV. And no, a LG, top LG, LG, did. LG only stopped supporting Google TV last year. Yeah, they, LG came in with the second wave. Uh, yeah, second wave. Yeah. Second so they. Wave. And yeah. they were the only company that invested in uh, Google TV 2.0. Like yeah. everyone else, like Logitech, already said no. Sony said, yeah, 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 whatever. Uh, but like no one else invested in LG did. They made the TV. They were at Google I/O last year or the year before. I don't forget. And they were showing off the TV, saying this is going to be big. It's going to be huge. We're really we're invested in it. And then they got horrible sales, most likely. Mm -hmm. And then they they decided, hey, we paid a billion dollars for Webos. We might as well just put it on TV. TVs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. Yeah, and, and those are the three big guys who control the TV market, and they're not in that announcement. I go, well, this is a waste of time. This is not something that makes any sense for anyone to purchase. So, and I would, like with you guys, I said it's it's just to me, it's terrible. It it it's foolish. Any more thoughts, Warren? Anyone want to add? Nobody wants said that all Nobody day. wants a smart TV. <laughs> Jesus, okay. nobody wants a smart TV. Like it, it's clear as day that nobody wants this. I mean, yeah, they they can they can argue and put their penetration numbers out there and say that this many number of people have smart TVs now. Yeah, because they have no choice to buy it because you had to trickle it down your line so far to down to the bottom of the barrel TVs that eventually, yeah, you can say you're gonna have a lot of market penetration because it's almost basic TV possible. But like you know, nobody. Nobody wants this. It's clear as day. It's like people still with smart TVs. You know, usually people that buy smart TVs end up buying something like a Roku or an Apple TV to go along with it, mm -hmm. or they buy themselves a Chromecast. 
the, they're slow interfaces on these smart TVs. The apps get updated slower, especially the Netflix Hulu apps get updated slower because they have mm-hmm. to be updated separately from the rest of the bunch. And they're not easy and intuitive to use. It's so much easier to just use a, a, a Fire TV, an Apple TV, a Chromecast, uh, a, a you know, there's you know, an Xbox One, a PlayStation Three and Four, Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty. They all do this. They all do everything that these smart TVs do. You don't have to upgrade anything. You don't have to change anything. The new software gets put right on. It, it's downloaded, updates it automatically happens. It's right there. Why? Well, and I'm I'm really excited to see this push towards my phone just being the brain. You know, because yeah. the Chromecast kind of started that off, and we're going to see the same thing with I hate. For everything that Warren just said, I hate the experience of technology in cars. You know, like you've got an in-dash nav system. Well, that's a piece of crap. My phone is updated way faster. It's way more powerful. It gives me much better information. Yeah. Um, and all of the services that I use are already on my phone, so why wouldn't I just plug my phone into that and have that be the brain? And that's exactly. kind of what I dig on stuff like Chromecast. But if you tell me that there's going to be another box I've got a plug under my TV, and it's got a different UI, and it's got some things that I like, and it's missing other services that I need. I'm I'm not I'm gonna check out. I I, I think it's crap. Well, see, at least the thing with the buying the, the extra box is that that box could get that update a lot faster than that TV is gonna get that update. TV is gonna sit there and not do anything. TV is gonna take forever. TV is going to have features that these other companies announced that are never going to show up. Oh, totally, totally true, but I also know that my phone is going to get updated faster than that box. You know. True. True. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which brings up another thing was Google Auto, which I like the idea, but we, you know, we talked about this in length. Is that the fact that they did not announce any partnership means that thing is useless. I mean, they talked no, about. No, they, they did. Uh, oh, who? who? Yeah. They uh, it was Audi and a bunch of other companies because they did this back at CES too, and then they just they basically said they were going to do it when Nvidia did the K1 processor. Right. Yeah. They were saying okay. like these are the companies they're going to sign on. The problem is like they didn't say anything concrete. Like yeah, we're going the out the next Audi A4 or A6 or whatever is going to have this in 2015. They just said cars in 2015. Is uh, Audi the only did. partnership that they mentioned? They put no, a, they had a, no, they put yeah. a screen like. 40 different auto manufacturers. Yeah, there was there were, there were a lot of companies on there. There was just mm. no one to say. Okay, because yeah, I, I got the, I got the impression at first. Right. I thought it was just they just made the announcement and there were no. Oh, nah, like, yeah, I remember just, there was a there was a screen where they put up all the logos of everybody that's participating. And, and I desperately want to see a company come out with a good third party head unit that I can swap yeah. out for my car. I mean, I, the, I'll that, do that. That is what I was yeah, talking yeah. about. That, and then in the last, t- when I was talking with Thunder in the Hangout, this is what I was talking about, exactly what Juan was saying. Either give me a USB port to plug it into, that you know I plug my phone into and everything happens automatically. Or like those little, uh, those little um, uh, readers that read your diagnostics, somehow use that to connect to your car that brings up all the stuff and you use your phone. You know, Android Auto shows up on there. Some way or somehow that's got to happen because, I'm sorry, People are not going to buy a new car just for this. Yeah, somebody is going to do that. I guarantee you, because uh, with every new car technology, there's always somebody that comes in and says, "We're going to do the head unit," because it probably costs you like the amount of money it would cost to put in in like a new screen and dashboard and update software and all that crap. You're not going to do that. But if you can just go into Best Buy or another store, so uh, that is more. Uh, one. Okay. I'm yeah, looking at the partners here. They yeah. are Audi, Ferrari, Mercedes, Volvo, BMW, Ford, General Motors, Honda, Hyundai, Jaguar, Land Rover, Kia, Mitsubishi, Nissan, Peugeot, Subaru, Suzuki, and Toyota. And for but, them, it's it's no big whoop. All they have to do is offer is, an accessories yeah. package that, that you can plug it into. I mean, it's e, not... Yeah. No, no. I find this funny, though. It's really weird because they all... Both of them are partnered. I'm reading the article. They both partner with... Google, Apple, all these companies, as well as Nokia. So, yeah. are they doing it on separate lines of cars with different or uh, uh, nav systems? I think, no, I, just, I really think it'll it's, just be a checkbox. You do you have an iPhone or an Android? Okay, well we're gonna check this box off of you off for your accessories. It's gonna be probably bare hardware, and they're just gonna throw in the operating system of choice and just change yeah. whatever plug they need to change in to make it work. And yeah, no, no. Lex, Lexus was doing this uh, in like 2011, but they came out with their own proprietary system like called Nform. And there would be an option that have you just that would be like you know when you go to the car dealer and say Ooh, I want to have this and this oh. that would be an option that would be on there and then if you didn't want it they'd get rid of it. 
What what happened? Chile, Chile just, just scored. scored, and it was a pretty goal too. Oh really? Oh, yeah, I'm watching I'm, on uh, I'm Sanchez. Sanchez. I can't stream and do this at the. I my TV's in a different <laughs> room. I watch oh, I'm, ESPN. Watch I'm, ESPN. I'm, I'm way behind on watch ESPN. Yeah, watch bro. ESPN is like that's another thing. That's right. the greatest app ever created. It's, it's on a 90 second delay. I realized yeah, that is. earlier this week, and it's so annoying. Sure. Because I was watching it, uh, and then I heard like a lot of screaming from uh, people like downstairs, and I was like, "What the hell?" And then I realized that somebody had scored a goal. Oh, it go. depends. If you're on Wi-Fi, it, it tends to stay very up to date. But if you're on 4G LT, it can it can be delayed a little bit. Gotcha. I've seen I've seen it. Ah, uh, I see the goal. That was bad defending there by uh, what's his name. Uh, no bait. Yeah. So sorry, sorry you guys for going off course there. And, yeah, the World Cup is on. Deal with it. <laughs> and doing that, but you were saying about them just basically um, going in and you basically select what device you have and you. Yeah, you. Uh, it's like uh, when you sit down with the the car salesman, you choose what you're going to add, and you can choose to have that system put in, or you can choose to just make it standard. So I'm pretty sure they're going to do the same thing with this and say, do you want to have. Uh, iOS in car or whatever. Oh, in this this Apple, model, yeah, Apple Android, Android, Android systems, where, yeah. yeah. So, but the problem with that is you're gonna you don't you buy your phone a lot more often than you buy your car. Yeah, so if I if I buy my if I choose iOS in a car in 2014 and in 2016 I decide to switch to Galaxy S5, I'm screwed <laughs> basically. This, this is why it's got to be an add-on or some sort or somewhere or another that. You know, you, you just add a box. It just connects to your phone, and, and it just goes bloop, and everything's on there. So, you know, do do what Motorola tried to do with the uh, what the heck was the name of that device? The um, the Motorola, the one that turned into the desktop, had the desktop mode. Oh, the, the Atrix. Atrix. Do what they try to do with the Atrix with that. That's where it's actually practical. It, it, no, I mean the honest truth, really though, um, is it needs to be a service that needs to be an app on your phone and once you plug and connect it just runs whatever it is whether it's Google or Android I mean to me it needs to be that thing where your phone your 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 car's screen is blank all it does is play music maybe the most and then when you come in with your smartphone is the BMW app that switches between iOS or Android whichever one yeah. uh, I mean, it'll, yeah. it'll, it'll take some time to get there I mean yeah. car manufacturers yeah. are just now starting to figure out technology in the car I mean yeah, seriously true. They're True. only just taking their first baby steps into connecting these devices and uh, making that meaningful. And also, it's whenever we see something new emerge in an industry like this, everyone tries to make it proprietary. So it'll probably take a good three, three years or so. Because that's before. great for innovation. It is, right? It's how <laughs> you make sure that you're the winner all the time. Um, it, I, I think it'll take a good three-year cycle before companies give up on that and just say, hey, you know, we've been getting complaints from customers. This doesn't work right. We just yeah. need something that'll that'll do what Warren says. Like, just you, you come in, it hooks up to your Wi-Fi, and then everything is just shared via that, that interface. Okay. No, I, I definitely agree there. To me, that's, that's where it needs to be. But uh, we'll see how those things go. But I think the funny part, though, is also like half of those companies, or actually all of them, also commit to Nokia's maps as their mapping service. So mm -hmm. are you going to now pick... Google, but still run Nokia Maps on the need. Uh, I mean, I, I don't get it. No, I really they, don't. They can't. I'm pretty. I guarantee you, Google's gonna make some licensing deal to get one. You got to take. It's all or nothing. So they're not gonna let yep. you replace it. I think. Yeah. I, I think we're putting too much stock into this whole thing because it's like Android Auto. We'll still be hearing about this and in, in the market three years later. <laughs> we'll still be hearing about this three years. Limping later. into the market. Mm -hmm. All of them. They're gonna all gonna be doing the same thing. Well, I'll tell you who's limping out of the market, Aereo TV. Oh, uh, it. Yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that segue. <laughs> um, you know, the announcement came in. Uh, Supreme Court order said Aero was uh, infringing on the rights of TV... Um, uh, what do you call Broadcasting. it? Broadcasting. Broadcasting. Yeah, so what do you guys think? What do you guys think of that announcement? Um, I think I'm the only, am I the only one here that's actually reviewed the, the, the service before? Yeah. Uh, I think I I'll, so. Okay. Um, they had a pretty good service. Um, I, the funny thing with this argument, I kind of see it in both sides of the story. This was not an easy 
uh, decision to make, I think, with the Supreme Court here, because the law can be interpreted. It's one of these laws that can be interpreted in one way or the other, and there really isn't an, a clear-cut way, but um, obviously more Supreme Court judges thought in one way versus the other. That's kind of why this went down the way it did. It was a it was a pretty cool service. Um, the, the the main reason that they're there, if you don't know that the reason that they got blocked was essentially that the Supreme Court feels that they are rebroadcasting to the masses, in, 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 without having the proper licensing to do so. Like you can rebroadcast. There's a certain level of rebroadcasting that you can do as far as me and you in the home playing on playing in a DVR and such. Oh, but sorry. after a certain number of people, it becomes a, 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 a licensing issue. And that's what they're kind of saying that they did. Even though they, they everyone had separate antennas, you couldn't share DVR stuff, you couldn't go back and DVR something from in the past. You had to, if you didn't get it then, you had to wait for it to show up again. It was pretty much, they kept it very individual. Mm -hmm. But they still felt that it was kind of that way. So, you know, it, it, it's a case where... I think they focus. I think for them personally, they focus too much on the case and on the fact of either selling their technology or licensing technology to other providers, content providers, to get to to use it with. Because quite frankly, the second that this came out, it wasn't maybe a month later after reviewing this that Comcast already has an answer to this, and it really not only works in the home, but Basically, does the exact same thing, but a lot faster and a lot cleaner in terms yeah, of the interface. Yeah, but Comcast and, doesn't have an answer to that because Comcast is still going to charge you eighty dollars a month. It's to, free. To it's free. Paid. It's included. It's included within your. It's included within. No, but that's the point. Service. You, you, that's you have to pay to be a Comcast, Comcast. customer. The yeah. whole appeal of Ariel was that you could get away from the cable companies and just rely on your network TV and your streaming apps. Well, yeah. no. The thing was, you still needed internet. That was yeah. Like, you needed internet, internet, but you didn't need to have TV. Well, it, essentially, you were still you was you, you was still needing a TV because because you would you could watch it online, obviously. But it was like you weren't necessarily getting away from from the cable companies and telecoms. You were cutting no, up. The, 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 you were still going over. You were still you were still reliant on them to still have this entire service work to begin with. No, no, they, they service that should have, and to this very day, I'm very shocked at how they just botched it, is Hulu. Hulu is a service that literally would have negated this, especially for the yeah. broadcasters. If they had decided to just not stick their heads in the sand and open up multiple different services, because with Hulu, you got every network, every show, ten ninety nine a month. Even if you charge twenty bucks a month, that literally was a full TV service. Oh, yeah, no, definitely it was. It was... Full TV had everything on. The only thing it didn't have was live TV. That was the only thing that Arrow really offered. On yeah, top but of that was the fact of live TV. But you know, it, to to me, that they should have been focusing on getting that to someone else that can push that out there. Because even if this was legal and it was up there, and then people start to sell, there would have been competitors out there that would have pushed this out there. And, and, and trust me, Andrew. I understand Comcast. You know, Comcast has that under a beta right now. It's really only for people without X ones and such. But I guarantee you, that was something that they were going to push out to internet only customers, and include it within within the internet only package or sell that thing separate because they would not have made that just to be making that for, yeah. for people. But that was definitely a plan. If this would have went into this sort of realm where now Arrow TV is is their own thing and they were allowed to continue on what they were doing, I guarantee you Comcast would have busted that out real quickly. Very yeah, quickly. one of the things I, I heard from Comcast was uh, when when they demoed the service was that um, FCC was basically limiting them from actually allowing you to stream wherever you wanted to um, away yeah. from your home. And you know the, the the tech was like, look, I have it. It's right here. My app is different from the, what's available in the store because I can do whatever I want. Yeah, but, <laughs> but but we're not allowed to do that. So yeah, yeah. they have something. There's the app, and then there's I don't know if you've used like the browser version XTV. That yeah. it works in the home. It's literally a mirrored image of what you already see on if you have the X1 TV there itself, and you get that anywhere. You know, it's just it's it was it was a case of I think they were damned if they do and they're damned if they didn't because granted, yeah, you're out there. You're selling. You would. You could have sold maybe a million. Or you might have signed up a few hundred thousand, maybe even a million people or so to the service. The, the company that's bigger than you, that has way more content than you, was going to probably release the same thing for even the same price or cheaper. 
and just kind of beat you out and kind on on a on a on a on the on the simple fact that they not only would have had live TV, they'd have had more stations and more of a reach. Yeah, no, but I, but, is, it, but isn't that sad though? I wish they did that instead. Yeah, I kind I kind I kind of I kind of wish Arrow would have won for the simple fact that it would have forced all of them to push this out there, and then we really would have seen that cable cutting. The option to cut the traditional cable box in favor, especially of with CBS service. complaining, like if Arrow, if if Arrow is approved by the Supreme Court, we're just going to take all our shows off the air. We're just yeah, going to walk which away. Which is what they're not going to do. Go home Bull. CBS. Bull. Yeah, yeah. And the NFL claimed the same thing. Well, well, if we're going to have, if there are Ariel, gonna, by yeah, the way, they're going to do that. Exactly. Like, oh, if Ariel is allowed to exist, we can't show the NFL and network television. There's no way with the amount of billion dollar sponsors and revenue that they get nope. that they're gonna pull the NFL. The, Roger Goodell is not that stupid. He's stupid. He's stupid. But he's smart Dumb, when it comes to making money. Yeah, he's smart when it comes to making money. He's not gonna cut off his nose just to spite his face. You know, the only reason they're complaining about that, they're saying that to NFL says that to please the broadcast, their main broadcasters exactly. partners. But trust me, they're doing the same exact thing. Do not be surprised if we see a very similar network to the, what they did, what the NBA, MLB does, and the WWE does that the NFL does too, and, and charge directly to the customer to access. It, it, it's there. They're going to do the same thing. Just skip right around, skip right around it. But it, it, this yeah. was a case of, this was a case of they didn't want anyone to beat them to the punch of doing the same thing or anything that could possibly fringe against that in terms of competition. You know, I understand also in the, in the case of content providers, you know, that are like, hey, you're rebroadcasting my stuff and I'm not getting a payment or a cut for what you're rebroadcasting out there. So I understand from that perspective as well, too. It's not, you know, it's like, it's something, think about this. It's something that YouTubers could complain about right now, but then it's not, it's really, it, you know, Google keeps that, Keep the advertising going, but imagine if like when Chrome, people started YouTubing on Chromecast, and you want to monetize on all platforms, and that's where you make content to monetize on, and all of a sudden you can't, mon you know, Chromecast, you know, somebody else makes something different that gets popular that's broadcasting off of YouTube, and it blocks ads, and you're not allowed to monetize on it, but that content's allowed to be played on there because of some what somebody else made. I can understand that the, the people there that made that content, especially YouTubers, would be, have a bit of a problem with that. So. I, I see it on both ends, but it w it would have been like you said, uh, Thunder. It would have been nice to see the get approved to just see the competition push out. Yeah. And ch a revolution would have sort of happened with that. It would have been nice to have seen that happen. But now, you, you know, you know, you know that's now. the thing. That's the thing about that space where it's you know what. If you look at the tech space, it's simple. You either make a competitor or you buy the guys out. Yeah. Right. You know, and I, I, I would at least appreciate them doing that. Like, at least going, okay, fine. We'll just make uh, something to crush you and be done with. Or we'll just buy you away. And cool. And sure, then we can kill well, well, Somebody's going to buy it for real cheap now. <laughs> no, no, no. But, but, but not try and sue them and take it to litigation. You know, that approach is just very stifling and foolish. Oh, yeah. Might. But I but also think a lot of these guys didn't understand what was going on with what Arrow was. I think a lot of them just did not understand it until they were already so deep in litigation and it kind of clicked in their head. It was like, oh, that's what they're doing. We're too deep in this already, so we got to let this keep going. Yeah, you know, yeah. that's that, that, I think that's, that's what kind of yeah. sort of uh, happened there, unfortunately. Uh, okay, moving from that and that sadness to another sort of sadness is, you know, uh, beginning of this week, Sam, uh, Samsung and Sprint announced the Galaxy S Sport. <laughs> okay. I don't see any excitement there. <laughs> I don't think there's much to say. Um, it's uh, basically the Galaxy S5 active, except now it's in some weird colors with a plastic exterior. And uh, no ruggedized feature sets to it, right? Pretty yeah, much. It's, it still has the waterproofing, but it, like... That's it's, the Galaxy it's not, S5. Yeah, the Galaxy S5 had that too. <laughs> it's basically... They have a new texture designed to, to make it more grip-friendly when you're sweating, because theoretically you would hold this while you're running, but... It's these carriers, once again, believing that we must have exclusives because that's why yeah. people come to, you know, to the carrier because you can get an exclusive phone. It, it, the iPhone has not proven that no one gives a shit. Right. I don't well, it, know what's stuck in their head to think that anyone cares about exclusivity. But it does look phones. like they, 
they they worked the the Galaxy S4 active design for the Galaxy S5 Sport. And yes, yes. yes. like the hardware the hardware buttons instead of the capacitive buttons on the front face. Yes. Um, cool. I, I mean, like I, I right now the uh, the Galaxy S5 active is shaping up to be maybe my favorite Android phone of uh, of this year. So I'm always going to be a fan of seeing ruggedized devices, you know, uh, durable devices, waterproof devices. But it's also coming on the tail end of, you know, what AT&T already did first and kind of just don't care as much. That's, nope. I'm sorry. Like, I just like, I like how they put, like, I don't understand carrier still thinking people like exclusive. I want, I want, I want them to bring me a stat that says that matters. And then I will show them the stats of the iPhone and say, yeah, no, it doesn't. It doesn't at all, because the iPhone proves that. Think about this for a second. When I, AT&T had the iPhone exclusive for as long as that it did, and, and that's where I think the belief came in that you had to have exclusive devices, when that became a non-exclusive and started showing up a Verizon, Sprint, and T-Mobile, who became the leader of iPhones after that? Who sells the most iPhones now? Uh, it's it's yeah. still at and I think. No. Nah. Yeah. Verizon. Verizon sells more than they do by a lot now. Verizon sells more than Verizon's most sold phone right now are, are actually iPhones. Shockingly enough. Well, every carrier's most sold phone is the iPhone, except for T-Mobile. That's right, but, T-Mobile but it, keeping you real. But but I'm just saying, it's just like thinking that exclusives are gonna yeah. to attract people to 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 go anywhere. It's it's clearly not gonna happen. Even when the iPhone was on AT and T, and AT and T rebought themselves essentially when they merged, and they were the number one carrier. They lost that tracking even before the iPhone got released. Uh, uh, at least everyone else, they ended up losing all that space. People ain't jumping for that stuff. So I don't understand why yeah, yeah, S5 Sport, S5 Active, what's Verizon going to come out with? The S5, what, what, what name is left? S5 One? S5 Fit. S5 Fit. Yeah. There you go. S5 yeah. Move. <laughs> I, I could see like an S5 Tough. That could be kind of cool, like Tough yeah. Books and stuff like that. Yes. You know? Yeah, yeah. There, there will be a collection of S fives before we know it by the end of the year. But this is also going to be the same thing that happened like with HTC back in the day. Like, I, I kind of feel at some point we'll probably see a properly Samsung branded, um, durable phone on all carriers. But for right now, because it's <clears throat> it's less asked for, they're going to have each carrier exclusive. You know, it's going to be. Largely the same device. Same thing, yeah. yeah. And, and people aren't fooled by that either. Like they, no. they, 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 they're smarter than ever now. They catch on. They well, catch I mean, like I think best. Sprint paid the price uh, with the Evo line. You know, like customers yeah. knew about the HTC one, and instead they got an Evo, and like that's not what they wanted. That's not what Boy, they asked yeah. for. True. Yeah. Sure, true. All right, uh, we have a bunch of questions and comments in the Q&A. Mm -hmm. uh, Lou Rod says, Juan, where is Megatron Hangouts? There we go. Yep, that's right. We have him here also. Um, then Matt Copeland says, give me. He's talking about the giveaway prizes. Dude, you got to enter into the contest, okay? Come on. Um, Elseworld Cinema says, in your opinion, do you think the best, do you, what do you think is the best Android smartphone in the price range of 100 to 125? Moto. I don't know if you pay attention to prices on phones anymore. <laughs> I'm so, just so wow. this to that because the prices changed so much now, and everybody's uh, got either a off contract, on contract, edge. You know, broken down plan. It is just like I don't know what prices are anymore. I mean, specifically targeted for that price point, I'd still say Motorola leads the pack. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah probably last year's phone. <laughs> a, used, a used Galaxy S4 in decent condition would probably be last year's phone. Last year's phone that's still selling now, brand new, is the best one. I just gave price. my my brother my Galaxy S4, and he's like in a world of amazement because he was still on the what was it that. Epic Touch. Oh, oh wow. Samsung. Yeah. As for Epic 4G Touch. Yeah, so he's yeah, like... Epic 4G Touch. Cause he's, I was like, yeah, I don't have an S5 I can give you. I can give you an S4. And he's like, hey, man, it's better than what I got now. And he's using it. He's like, oh, my God, thank you. This is so incredible. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and here we have people that are on S4, switching to S5s, like, oh, S4, yuck. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and when you really weigh the performance, I mean, like, I, just picking up some of last year's phones, I, I think there are some things that the M7 still does better than the M8. You know, like, we're, we're not going to see explosive runaway 
crazy performance upgrades year to year. It's going to be iteration. It's going to be modest improvement. Yeah. And yeah, last it, year's handsets are still very competitive. From yeah, the got. difference is with an, with an M8, your phone will last you until about 9. With an M7, it might top out at like 8.30, like stuff like that. <laughs> um, Lou Rod says, none of the apps work on my potato. Yeah, I mean, so you need to put one-star reviews on all those apps, son. When will they start <laughs> respecting potatoes, those damn developers? Uh, Matt Copeland says, sometimes I like like change for the sake of change. I rearrange my work desk sometimes just to keep things fresh. Talking about Android L. Oh, right, right, right. I mean, like, and, and I'm cool with that being, like, a personal, like, I want to customize something or I want to change something up. I get a little twitchy when it's a company changing, like, menu structure or changing the UI of something and it doesn't really provide a tangible benefit. That kind of stuff, when yeah, I have like, to relearn how to use an app, that kind of bugs. Yeah, yesterday I, uh, I realized that Android removed uh, speed dial like a couple versions ago because I didn't use it, but like my aunt was asking me, oh, how do I put my speed dial in here? And I'm looking around the phone, and I'm like, wait a minute. You speed dial still? Yeah. Yeah. Because... Yeah, uh, she just opened the the launcher app, the dialer app, and just tapped the button once. Yeah. Some people still think these things are phones. Yeah. Yeah. Speed di speed dial is back with L. Um, it takes it just it actually accumulates whatever is your most dialed uh, numbers and puts it there. Because yeah. when I put up L, it just took the numbers I dialed the most and puts it in my speed dial. So, which is actually cool though, because I just opened it up. But, but then a lot of I thought a lot of carriers, I thought a lot of companies. Put that in anyway. It's like in their in their in their yeah no no yeah people, but, yeah people doing these skins yeah um, yeah but in the standard Android version it was removed so like if you had a Motorola phone or a Nexus or stuff like that it wasn't in there yeah yeah um, okay then uh, we have one from Matt Copeland saying what do you guys think about the guy shouting about murderous robot conspiracies at Google I/O I think there were two people shouting about that cocaine's a hell of a drug. <laughs> I want to party with that guy. <laughs> I need to know what he's at at all times. Because I, I don't him want to be anywhere than there. He, people like him need to be tracked. That's a prison guy. No, he, but he needs to be tracked. And but it's see, funny, for everything that he was complaining about, that's exactly what he needs, is a giant <laughs> mega corporation tracking his every movement and having... We need to know where he is to avoid where, to avoid where he's located at uh, all times. Okay. Uh, Matt Copeland says, I love my WebOS TV. He probably has the new LG TV. You and those three people that own it. <laughs> oh, come on. Uh, hey, WebOS no. TV is pretty nice. I, it I is nice. Oh, it's nice, but like, how many people own one? I, I disagree because remember, they are the number two TV guys, so and whatever and TVs are sold this year, all, almost all their TVs have WebOS, so yeah. um, it's going to be. Do there. people even know that they have WebOS? I wonder. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's branded pretty much well. Uh, what do you guys think Samsung? Is, well, they uh, use the Apple TV. Uh, do, you, do you guys still think Samsung is going to keep the S Pen with the Note series? I find myself not using it anymore. That's by uh, Truce to God. I think yeah, that's yes. just you. Yeah. 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 It, it, has, I, I, it has its uses. I've, I've, I've got. I don't use it every day, but I've had situations where I've needed to use it to sign a document, and I just pull it out and I could just sign on it. And it's just like. It, it, it's so useful for when you need it. It's not something you're going to use every day because we're not, mm -hmm. you know, we're not writing, we're not writing hiragana, katakana, kanji, or any, any like, you know, mm -hmm. things like that on a daily basis, like many other countries are, like in Asia are. But I still think that it, it, it's got a different value proposition in the United States as an extra feature versus a necessity in other countries. So I don't mm -hmm. see them making two separate things, you know, one for us and one not for them. They're just they're, they're, they're going to keep everything in one. It, it, it doesn't matter because it it's stuck in your phone. It doesn't destroy the aesthetic of your phone. It you know you don't have to use it, and it's not like you're being forced to use it anyway. Too. So mm -hmm. you know it's if you need it, it's there. If you don't need it, it's still there. Then that's pretty much it. All right, cool, cool. Um, yeah, is there anything else we missed out this week um, before we we wrap up and, and round up? Um, I had a small thought on. Not a small thought, but something that hit me out oh. about sort of this whole NFC payment thing and uh, just where digital payments are going to go to, right? And I'm sitting there thinking, and what, it happened a couple of times, that most recently when I used an Uber. And I'm using Uber, 
and I go through and I just pay through the app. I actually got a free ride. They were doing some free promotion. I actually got a free ride at that point. So it just paid out, right? Yeah. And no host, no fuss. It just charges automatically. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, I'm like, this is how digital payments or where payments are going to eventually should end up going. I think the whole thought process of going through the wallet with the NFC, through Google Wallet, ISIS, and all those things like that, to me, it... it I don't think those are. I don't think they're going to catch on the way they should catch on, and I don't. And I think it's not the most efficient way to catch on either, just because there's so many different technologies, and no one's going to agree on anything. It's, nobody's going to agree on a damn thing with this. They but, all want the proprietary solution because solution. then they'll make the most money. And, 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 and I think I've ranted plenty of times on here how NFC is pretty much payments are just pretty much broken and dead. But imagine being able to, you know, you know, Uber is, is a great example of this. But imagine going into a uh, a department store, any kind, um, you know, uh, Lord and Taylor. Let's say you go in the Lord and Taylor or something, and you're looking around, and you want to buy some things. And then the merchant comes up to you. No, I mean, not the merchant, but the uh, cashier or the person helping you comes up to you and say, "Hey, you're ready to check out." You check. Uh, you say, "Yes." Um, do you have our app? And you can just instantly kind of just download the app, pay right through the app through the store. You know, it's sophisticated enough that it could tell between you going into the store versus you know paying online and picking up and such. You hit that. And a page right in there, and checkout happens instantly right there, and you walk out the door. But let's say you don't have a smartphone or something like, or, or, or you don't have the ability to use the app. That 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 person there is probably going to have a tablet or a phone with a either NFC backing to it, or something that'll read the new chips because we're all going to get chips inside of our digit uh, out of our debit card soon enough. Or I'll have a swipe there. You swipe that, and you pay right there, and then the same transaction is done. It seems to me that if we want to get to the next payment level, it seems to me that it's going to go through an app space, and the app space is going to have to happen through the specific stores themselves and the specific retailers themselves more so than it's going to be you put all your credit cards in this wallet thing and it just kind of goes. I don't think that's. I mean, I mean, I mean it, it it's it's yes and no because then there's me like I don't want to put my information in every bloody store I shop at or every place I decide to shop at like you know and, and which is why a wallet idea always makes sense because well, wallet like, idea, well is, if the apps can access those that wallet information yeah if so, it that can, it sort of, so it brings it up I think that's the, that was the other part I didn't really mention I'm thinking about if that like, something like a PayPal um, sort of like, like Andrew that, we, we can't hear you at all you, I think you're trying to say sort something. of like um we still Uber, can't hear you Andrew no, I wasn't saying anything. I was saying that retailers wouldn't participate unless they could get your information because, like, when you go to the store and they'll ask you for your phone number or something, they're trying to correlate you and track you and see what you purchased Purchase, so they can yeah. tell your information. That's why, like, uh, I, I didn't realize at first when I, like, signed up for, like, Best Buy and Brandsmart were doing things like that. And I st when companies ask now for my phone number, I tell them no. Like, I, I don't want to give it to you. <laughs> yeah, I just said I say no. I just say no. I don't want to do that. And then they, they just go and they, ring you up. They could still track the purchase based upon zip code, where you purchased it from. They, they have a million. Yeah, but they don't, know, they don't have know. It's me. Phone, you need to be honest with you. I'm telling well, you but that's how Target got experience. Experience. Was, was tracking credit cards. The phone number cards, isn't so. the phone number isn't as <clears throat> valuable as you may think it actually no, is. No, but the phone number point. is how they remember you uh, and keep track of you and keep coming back because unless I'm making a big purchase, I typically pay with cash. Like, the only mm -hmm. thing I buy with my credit card are, like, TVs or stuff like that, where they'll have my debit card or credit card or whatever. Otherwise, I'm, I'm normally paying with cash. So the phone number is the, the fallback that they have to always have something to track you. Yeah, because yeah, you know how I did. But, but, that's, but that's more to look up your your, your receipt and information more. No, so no, no, it's, it's not necessarily that. Remember, I started from department stores, aka your stop and shops, are the ones who started these, where they gave you stop and shop cards. Now people are going away from keeping the cards because the idea of those cards was to track your how you shop, so they can actually suggest specifically to you what to buy. Next. A lot of those How companies, a lot of those companies, cut those cards out themselves. Uh, too. No, no, I know, but I'm saying because people were going away from the cards. That's why. So now they want to actually get your information to still tie you to it, so that they can do that. Because the reason why you go to a store like say, um, say Stop and Shop is that you know you go to an aisle that's all baking stuff, and then you see a banana in the middle of the aisle because. Everybody who does that usually buys bananas at, at certain times. Like that's how all the correlation and tracking is. 
and you know they also tie to customers when you're going to check in to give you coupons specifically how you buy and all that kind of stuff so having that number like Andrew said is what they want to make sure they keep tallying all that stuff so they can push more to you you know is the reason why Amazon does that because they already have that information there anyway yeah and but they can all you, know, you can tell that to the number you can also get this this so many different ways it's Kind of alarming. And, and I think, in the, and I think also in, in the future with uh, the type of mobile payment systems that we'll be looking at, and the fact that we're already starting to see little little tricks like tracking devices via Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, um, our ability to be not tracked is going to be exhausted. I would say within the next two years. But yeah. um, yeah, but uh, but you know the, the other the other thing is why I think retailers may sign up if they can reduce the cost that they have to pay per swipe for things. They'll take that, especially on small yeah. margin items that they don't take. They don't make a lot of money off. If they can reduce that extremely expensive cost, like what some of these places like Visa, Mastercard, and America Express and Discover charge for just to swipe the card through the transaction mm -hmm. is highway robbery. <laughs> because <laughs> they're the, the only ones who do it. Robbery. And that's why in LA you'll see you'll see gas stations which are able to flaunt sort of loopholes on what things cost by saying like if you pay cash, it's it's like twenty cents less per gallon than yeah. if you pay. Oh yeah. Or or a lot of places take square payments because the, the pay, because the right. percentage of payments is so much lower. It's what they charge is an insane amount. And and if they and if retailers can avoid that, they have plenty of other ways to track. If they can avoid that and sacrifice phone number, they'll take that because that's a that's a few that's a few a couple of million, maybe billion dollars or so that they spend per year on that type of stuff, and they can who, pocket that money in. Who they'll, owns they'll Square? It. They Square. are Square owns it. They're Square in, owns themselves. Yeah, their 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 goal is to be acquired by somebody, but at the yeah. moment, it's it's uh, Jack Dorsey, the guy that co-created Twitter, and a bunch a bunch of uh, what's it called. Uh, venture capitalists, venture, uh, VCs, and I, and yeah. I think it's. Uh, okay. it's probably I, 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 I was wondering how they got low rates for swiping, especially when you're swiping the credit card, which you still have to pay the credit card company at some point. So mm -hmm. I'm just wondering how and why. Maybe the venture capitalists did have some, you know, some connections mm -hmm. with these guys. It's probably yeah, why. It, it's, yeah. it, and, and especially, you know, if you can lower those, it's going to be it's going to be a lot nicer for the retailers. And then you have some place, some places that actually make money off of it. Certain banks actually make money off of that, off of right. how many times a card is actually swiped. And it's very few places that actually do. <laughs> but it could it, that that could be a benefit as well too. In some ways, if they can figure out the money. But trust me, if they can afford avoid paying, you know, every company has a different cost. But some some places pay up to six dollars just for an American Express to be swiped. And if they can avoid that, you know, out of their markup. They're gonna do it. They're, yeah, yeah. They're, they're absolutely gonna do it. Well, well, we'll see. That whole that whole market is gonna be interesting to see how it changes all together. But um, yeah. uh, anything else, guys, before we round up and eventually um, send Andrew off? The giveaway. Oh yeah, yes, yes, yes. I was just I was just thinking of any other topics altogether. No. So uh, as as I mentioned, guys, we will be starting a giveaway on a weekly basis uh, on the Hangout. Uh, for your information, there will be no Hangout next week because it's July 4th weekend, which is, you know, a lot of celebrations. And also, I would be uh, busy with my uncle's birthday party, so I won't be around. But this week, uh, we are giving away two prizes. The first one is, uh, again, an EX06 gaming headset. works with PS4, Xbox One, PS3, Xbox 360 PC, every gaming console you can use this on, as well as a SteelSeries rival gaming mouse. So you can win this. Uh, the rules are very simple. All you have to do, first of all, is subscribe to Board at Work, Some Gadget Guy, and BW1 on YouTube. And then you just have to answer a question. There is no right or wrong answer, but you do have to answer a question, and the winner will be picked at random. And I believe there was a question, uh, Juan. Um, if you can uh, repeat that for us, that would well, be great. I'm just kind of I'm kind of curious, uh, based on the the fact that our our viewers are pretty tech savvy and they're they're sort of on the pulse. Uh, what do you think will be the most successful Android Wear device by year's end? Do you think it's going to be the Samsung? Do you think it's going to be the LG? Do you think the Moto's already taken the prize? Uh, leave us a comment uh, answering which one you think 
going to be uh, the top selling watch, and that's how you'll get entered into this week's contest. contest. Yes, and uh, just to note, this contest is limited to viewers in the U.S. Uh, there will be contests that will be open worldwide. We will let you know, but just letting you know, this one specifically will be limited to viewers in the United States. So remember, subscribe to Board at Work, Some Gadget Guy, and BW1 on YouTube. Um, answer the question um, on what you think will be the best-selling Android wearable between the LG G Watch, the Gear Live, and, uh, <laughs> and the Moto 360. Um, and on that note, we want to take this time to give a special thanks to the man in red and white with the red headphones, the one and only Mr. Andrew Cam who will not be gracing us with his presence because he's a back... I mean, I, I heard, I heard a... you. <laughs> <laughs> I hate his face. <laughs> you what? So I didn't hear you. I hate his face. Yeah, I mean, I mean you know, face. I mean, he's leaving <laughs> us, um, moving on to, you know, hopefully bigger and better things. So the next time we see Andrew, he will be a CEO at some company, mm -hmm. and he will grace us with uh, at least an interview where we can say, yeah, Mr. CEO... Um, hire us to give you a company some cool ideas. Yeah, I'm tell my security guard, get these peasants out of here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, any last uh, any last thoughts and comments for people as you as you leave, Andrew? No, just say like just a reminder to people to just enjoy your technology. A lot of times we get caught up in the zero sum game and saying this is better than this, this is better than that. Just appreciate what you have because I've got about twelve phones in the room behind me, and I like all 12 of them for different reasons. So whatever phone you end up deciding, obviously you're not going to walk around with as many phones with me, and now I'm not going to because my job doesn't require it, but uh, just enjoy the device that you pick up and find what works best for you rather than saying what's the best phone out there. All right, cool, man, cool. Thank you very much again. Uh, good luck, Andrew. Um, wish you all the best and huge success in your ventures. And on that uh, nice uh, note with words of wisdom from Andrew, want to say thank you very much, guys, for joining us on the show. Um, again, if you want to follow Andrew, um, he is on Twitter. What is your Twitter handle, Andrew? Yeah, so my Twitter is Andrew Cam, uh, A-N-D-R-E-W-K-A-M. All right, you can follow him there. He 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 likes to change his handle all the time with different names, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, um, you know he talks. He loves sports, soccer, and all that fun stuff there. And um, next up is Mr. Juan Bagnell from Some Gadget Guy. Uh, you can check him out on Some Gadget Guy on YouTube. Subscribe to his channel. Well, you have to subscribe to his channel because if you want to win those. You have to. You want to win those awesome prizes. Yeah, yeah. So you have to. <laughs> and uh, subscribe. Uh, uh, follow him on, on Twitter. It's also Some Gadget Guy. As well as check out SomeGadgetGuy.com. Uh, he has some nice articles, great videos, lots of uh, videos with front facing cameras. Only guy on the web who does that that I know. So um, check that out and, and, and see what he has there. And also check out Mr. Warren Bowman from BW1.com. Uh, you subscribe to his channel. Again, you have to. You have no choice. I have no choice. Um, <laughs> and, um, and check out his videos. Go some nice long-form videos. Also follow I believe him. that we will win. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody in here said USA was getting out of the group, and I was completely shunned by how many soccer experts. <laughs> well, well, we'll see how far the U.S. goes. I mean, it's had the few years, but they're playing against Belgium, and I call it the dead end. That's what I call it. But anyway, um, call the your channel. You call it. Anyway, hey, I, I said Nigeria. I said Nigeria was going to make it out of the group, and they did. So you said that with the most little faith that you could have possibly said. <laughs> no, no, I, I did not believe they were going to make it out of the group. I did. I mean, Andrew could, Andrew could probably attest yeah. to that very well. I was, I was like, no, they're not making it. After that first game that they drew in Iran, I almost just, I lost it. I was like, this is just, nah, it's a waste of my time. But, but again, check out <laughs> you know, warrenfbw1.com. Uh, subscribe to his channel. That is his Twitter handle there. And subscribe to BW1 on YouTube. And uh, as well as myself, uh, Thunder E at Board at Work. Uh, YouTube channel is Board at Work. Uh, Twitter handle is also the same. Subscribe, enter the contest. And we will see you guys in two weeks. So enjoy your entertainment. Have fun and have a good July 4th. Peace. Bam. Bam. Yeah. Bam.